Hello everyone, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn, a guide on picking the proper parts for Velo 3D additive manufacturing. My name is Gene Miller, I'm a senior applications engineer here at Velo 3D. I joined the team back in 2016 as a process engineer, worked on process development of support-free processes. Prior to that, I came from a world of foundry engineering, process engineering, and I hold a bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Colorado State University. So why do we need supports? Well, metal's hot, it cools, it contracts. Each layer, the laser, melts a thin layer of powder onto the substrate. This cools and contracts and creates internal stresses, which propagate during the build. And if left unchecked, they can lead to process breakdowns. So what you see on the left-hand side is a conical shape outward growing cone, which is a challenging part to print in metal additive manufacturing. The part starts off properly with no process breakdowns, but as it builds upward in Z, the stresses accumulate, and you see these process breakdowns. We call them melt pool instabilities. Uh, there's, there's an example of a melt pool instability on the right-hand side, as well as a melt pool instability with a part protrusion, which would then lead to impossible recoding. At this point, the build is terminated. And Velo 3D's solution is to use unique and advanced laser processes and apply them locally to specific areas to avoid the need for added supports, as well as maintaining and mitigating internal stresses and warps. These are applied specifically to regions of the part automatically by our flow software. A good example is the Sierra Turbines part that we printed with Velo 3D support free technology. In our preprint software, Flow, specific laser processes are automatically applied to proper regions of the part. Vertical walls get their own specific process. Low angle closures, both growing inward and outward and closing upon themselves, get a specified laser parameter locally to avoid the need for added support. Lattice parameters as well have their own specific laser process to enable low overhangs of strut type geometry. Bulk parameters are also automatically applied to ensure faster throughput of the part. On the left here you see an example of an incumbent supported AM bracket. Velo 3D support free technology enables the elimination of many of these supports. The lasers on the Sapphire system are one kilowatt. It's a two laser system with an in situ overlay calibration. The full field capability of each laser means that both lasers can be used anywhere on the build plate. The build volume is 315 millimeter round build plate by 400 millimeters tall. We've also introduced our new one meter Z system. This opens up a thousand millimeters of build height in Z. Our current materials are Inconel 718, TIE 64, aluminum F357, and Hastelloy. We use typical laser powder bed fusion powders. We use an argon inert environment the recoder is a proprietary non-contact recoder, and the process uses a 50 micron standard layer thickness. Material properties are better than or equivalent to cast. We can print as printed 99.9% .9 density, as well as have a geometric accuracy of plus or minus 50 micron on small features. Large features are printed within 0.2% of the nominal dimension. Dimensional limits. Thin pins are a good example of what Velo 3D is capable of. Here are some examples of features that we can print. Thin pins can be printed a minimum thickness of 130 microns in vertical direction. As they approach lower angles, the minimum thickness increases to about 190 microns. We're also not limited by the aspect ratio of these parts. We can print as high as we want for as long as we want. Thin walls are similar, a uh, minimum thickness of about, of about 150 microns, and no recoder orientation dependence. Again, the recoder doesn't touch the part. Similar limitations though, lower overhangs and increased thickness to some degree. A great example of this thin wall process application was found on the PWR heat exchanger. It's about a three inch by three inch cube with many intricate internal thin wall features, all printed support free. This part was pressure tested at PWR's facility at 6 bar and found to be leak tight at that operating pressure. This was a really exciting success for us.
more dimensional limits regarding horizontal holes. Velo 3D can print an unsupported span of 100 millimeter diameter on a horizontal hole. We can resolve a minimum of 500 micron horizontal hole. When you tilt those holes, the maximum diameter greatly increases to well beyond 100 millimeters, especially when the degree of tilt is 10 degrees or more. Dome closures are another feature that we can print well beyond a 100 millimeter diameter, completely free of support. Horizontal spans up to 10 millimeters unsupported. The minimum width between those two spans that we can resolve is 250 micron. Moving on to surface finish. Surface finish has always been a challenge in metal additive manufacturing parts, especially when it comes to different overhangs and trying to print a consistent and predictable surface finish. Velo 3D can print a very predictable, very repeatable surface finish anywhere on the part, regardless of degree of overhang. Here we see our gauge block, and we use this as an example to show the difference in surface finish from a vertical wall to a 10 degree overhang to an upward facing surface. Surface finish starts at about four micron SA on a vertical wall and only falls to about 13 micron SA, even on a 10 degree overhang. In order to achieve these surface finishes, we need to avoid process breakdowns. By following our angle guidelines, we can keep the process normal and repeatable. The driving factors here are the angle normal to the horizontal, the curvature of the leading edge, the number of layers or how tall the feature propagates, the laser angle of incidence, making a part that grows towards the laser is easier than growing away from the laser. There are some other local geometric characteristics as well, but I'll give some examples here in the next few slides. Let's take a look at our probability of breakdown chart here for an angled plane. On the x-axis, we show the angle of overhang of the plane, and the y-axis is the height of the feature. When both of these features start, the probability of breakdown is pretty equal. But as the part grows upward, the probability of breakdown increases. This is because the unconstrained plane is able to lift upward and succumb to the internal stresses and warps of the part. The constrained plane can survive much longer before a process breakdown is likely. The idea of these constrained planes was utilized in this really cool part from KW Micropower. It's a titanium part. It's rather large. Uh, we printed it support free on the inside. Lower overhangs uh, below eight degrees printed without support, and without process breakdowns. It was another really exciting, uh, really big success for Velo. Another shape where we see this behavior is an inward growing versus an outward growing cone. Outward growing cones don't like to behave. The stresses and the warps tend to lift upward on the part, which is never good for the process. The likelihood of a breakdown is higher than that of an inward growing cone where the stresses and warps help keep the part constrained and down onto the build plane where the process can ma maintain a level of control for much longer. We like to use this inward growing conical surface whenever we can. This really helps us push, push the boundaries of what we can print unsupported for a long period of time. We have to keep these behaviors in mind when printing parts like shrouded impellers, where proper orientation is critical to avoid process breakdowns. If we orient the part in the fashion that you see here, we create a large outward growing cone. This is less than ideal and will more than likely show process breakdowns. If we flip that same impeller upside down, we now have an inward growing cone. This is a much more desirable print orientation, and we can print this all day long, support free on the inside, without process breakdowns. These techniques were leveraged in order to print the Hanwha Teclin impeller. This was an Inconel print with low overhangs that you just couldn't print support free on another system. Another really beautiful part that came out of a Velo Sapphire. Looking ahead on our development roadmap, we're pleased to release our meter tall Sapphire configuration. This is the same Sapphire layout, but with more than twice of the build opportunity in the Z direction. 
We're forever expanding our geometric ranges with new process sets and parameters to enable more printing of more complex features. These new process parameters are included to all our customers in software updates. We're also developing new metals and new materials. We also offer free process development of any material that a customer would like with the purchase of a Sapphire system. To summarize what we've talked about here today, I'd like to reiterate that Vela 3 ds goal is really to expand the design space for what is actually printable on a laser powder bed fusion system. These support free processes are always included with the Sapphire purchase. Our material properties are fully dense, better than antiquated casting processes. Our main goal is to reduce the need for support structures and associated post-processing. And the most important thing to me is the greater flexibility for design. We'd like to minimize the compromise that designers need to take into account for manufacturability of their parts. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to answer any questions.